Hi there, and welcome to our how-to video on setting up Octolapse. In this video, we're going to go over how to set up Octolapse with a webcam, then with a DSLR using the Raspberry Pi to make the time lapse, and finally, saving the images to the DSLR SD card instead of the Raspberry Pi. Here we are on a fresh Raspberry Pi 3B+. We have already gone ahead and downloaded the Palette 2 and Canvas plugins. The next step we will need is to install the Octolapse plugin. To do so, we open up our settings and then Plugin Manager. We click Get More and type in Octolapse. It will then download the latest version of Octolapse and require us to restart the Pi. Once the Pi has restarted, we now see a new tab that has been created called Octolapse. Within this tab is all the basic settings you need to get started. The first thing we will set up is the printer we're going to use. For this video, we're going to use the Prusa i3 Mark III. Next, we are going to click the cogwheel here to set the proper settings for Octolapse to use when capturing images. We're going to change the current slicer to Other Slicer as we are going to use Canvas. Now, we're going to input our Z-Hop setting, which is 0.5 millimeters. Our retraction settings is already set to 0.8, so no need to change that for us. Next, we will set our retraction speed and finally set our movement speed to 150 millimeters per second. We will now click Save. Now that our printer settings are finished, we can adjust where we want the print head to be located when taking an image. I personally like the print head to be in the back left corner. We will leave the snapshot setting alone. In the rendering section, we have a bunch of settings, but I personally enjoy having a small amount of time before and after the print in the video, so we will leave it with the plus one second pre and post roll setting. An important thing to make sure you change on the printer side is to add a G90 command to the very beginning of your start sequence. This setting is vital for Octolapse to function properly. Now we're going to slice our model in Canvas. I have already pre-selected a low poly Squirtle model from Thingiverse for this. You can find the link to the model in the description. Now we're going to add our colors and properly orient our model. Now that the model is sliced, we will send it to our Raspberry Pi. We see that the Pi has received the model and is ready to print. We can go ahead and connect our palette too, and make sure the webcam is in the proper orientation. Then we will make sure that in the Octolapse tab, we have all of our desired settings. We are ready to go. Let's start the print. Once our filament is loaded and we are ready to extrude, we're going to use the smart load feature and we will see a few errors pop up in the corner. Those are Octolabs having some confusion on why we are extruding and not homed yet. We don't have to worry about those errors as they will stop once we have started the print. Now we are all loaded and we'll start our print. It will not be long before the few images are taken by the camera and we will see the preview in the small window here. Let's let this print finish and we will pick up from there. Here we are with our finished print and time lapse. We see the camera has taken 247 snapshots and is telling us our total snapshot time. To download our time lapse, we simply navigate to the time lapse tab and in the finished time lapses, we see our new Squirtle time lapse. We can simply download it here. Now let's take a peek at what it looks like. We see that our lighting and our focus was a bit off, but all in all, the time lapse worked. 
Now that we know how to set up Octolapse with a webcam, let's look into setting it up with an external DSLR. To do so, we have this GitHub link from the user former lurker explaining how we set up an external camera. The first step is to install the latest Octoprint and Octolapse. We previously did this in the webcam setup section, so we won't go over that a second time. The second step is to install GPhoto 2 onto our Raspberry Pi. There is a link here that lists all the compatible cameras with GPhoto 2. I would make sure your camera is on that list before continuing. Now to install GPhoto 2, we want to connect to our Raspberry Pi. We are going to use command prompt for this example. To connect to our Pi, we simply enter ssh pi at our Pi address. Then we will be prompted to enter our Pi password. Once that's finished, we will be connected to our Pi. Before inputting the line former lurker has told us, we want to update first so that we don't have any issues installing GPhoto 2. To do this, we simply enter sudo apt-get space update and then input the Raspberry Pi password once more. Once that is finished, we will now enter sudo apt-get space install space gphoto2. And perfect, it installed correctly. Now, we can move on to step 3, which is changing the permissions for gphoto2. This change will allow the software to capture an image without needing the Pi password every time. We simply enter sudo the sudo which opens up the desired file. Now, we have to add a bunch of lines to the bottom of this file. We navigate to the bottom with our arrow keys, then we will copy the new lines we need to add, and to paste them into command prompt, we simply right click once. Now, to save our changes, we type control O, and then enter. To exit this file, we type Control X. Now, we want to make sure that GPhoto2's location matches the changes we just made. To do that, we type in where is space GPhoto2, and it will output the file location. It looks like ours matches correctly, so we can move on. Now, we will reboot the Pi. To do so, type in sudo space reboot. After a minute, our Pi should be rebooted and we can reconnect. We can now continue on to step 4. At this point, you should make sure that your camera is connected to the Raspberry Pi via USB before doing this step. Once you've plugged in your camera into the Pi, we can run the code gphoto2 dash dash auto dash detect. Now our Pi has given us back information saying there is a PTP class camera connected, which means the Pi has recognized our camera. If there are no cameras detected, this will show blank and you should recheck your connections to your camera. Now that we know our camera is detected, we should test that the Pi can capture an image using the camera. To do this, we simply type in gphoto2 space dash dash capture dash image. This will capture an image and save it to the camera. To capture an image and save it to the Pi, we simply type in gphoto2 dash dash capture dash image dash and dash download. We will then see that the Pi now has our image downloaded. By typing in ls, we see the pink file is our image. It works! Moving on to step 5, creating a script for the Raspberry Pi to call when it wants to take an image. First, we are going to go into the scripts folder in the Pi by typing in cd slash home slash pi slash scripts. Now that we are in the scripts folder, we can create our script by typing in nano and then making the file whatever you want to call it. We're going to call it take-snapshot.sh. Make sure to add the .sh. Once you enter that line, we are taken to an empty file. This is where we will input our code to capture an image. 
We will copy the code former lurker has put in his post. Make sure to copy all of it or else it won't work. Doing the same as before, by right clicking, we can paste the code into the file. To save the file is the same as well. Control O, then enter, and exit the file with Control X. Now, we need to add permission to our script. To do so, enter chmod space plus X, and then the name of our file. To test this, Former Lurker has a line we can copy and paste to make sure it all works. we should see the same output as they have in their post. If we type in ls, we can see the image there. To delete it, simply enter rm space test.jpg and enter y to delete it. As you can see, now it is gone. On to step six. We now want to make a new camera in Octolabs for the DSLR. Before we move over to Octolapse, let's copy the line here that we will need in order for Octolapse to properly call the script. We can open our Octoprint and go to Settings and scroll down to Octolapse. We then navigate to the Camera tab and select Add Profile. We will change the camera type to an external camera-script first. Let's name the new camera DSLR. And as you can see, this section is highlighted red because we need to input our snapshot script location. This is where we will paste that line we copied previously. We are now going to change the snapshot delay to zero and the snapshot timeout to 10,000. That should be everything. Let's click save. And now we should see two cameras in the Octolapse section, one being our webcam and the other our new DSLR. We are going to want to deselect our webcam as we are not going to be using it for this test. If we go back to the post, we are on to the final step of testing our new DSLR script by running a test print. Since we already sliced our Squirtle before, we will be using the exact same G code again. Now we start our print like we did before. We will see our images taken from our camera appear in the preview window as long as we select the DSLR instead of the webcam in the drop down menu. Let's fast forward a little bit until our first images come through. As you can see, the camera has taken two snapshots so far. Let's allow this print to finish and check out the time lapse once it's done. Now that the time lapse is done, we see the preview window showing the final image the camera took. To download our new time lapse, we do the same as before. We navigate to the time lapse tab and download our new time lapse. Let's take a look at what we got. While it looks amazing, there is a big difference between a time lapse that is created on the Raspberry Pi and one that is not. Here is a side by side of those two options. We can see the difference in the detail of the SD card time lapse over the Pi time lapse. Now let's show you how we managed to change our Octolapse setup to capture only to our SD card. The first step is to figure out what options you have with your camera for a capture target. That is where the camera will send the file to once captured. To do so, simply enter gphoto2 dash dash get dash config space capture target. This will display the choices you have of where to send the photos. Right now, you can see that the choice of internal RAM is selected, so the camera will take the photo and save it to the RAM and then send it to the Pi. We want to change it to the memory card choice. To 
To do that, I found the best way was to edit the initial take snapshot script we made earlier. To do this, we need to go into our script folder by entering cd space scripts. Then entering nano and then our take snapshot. This opens up the script we made earlier. By deleting everything below the arguments section and replacing it with two lines, I found success. Those lines were gphoto2 dash dash set dash config space capture target equals one. Then gphoto2 dash dash capture dash image. This will capture an image from the camera and send it to the SD card. To save our changes, type Control O, then Enter, and then Control X to exit the file. We should be good to go. To make sure it works, I found that watching the camera while it's taking a photo and making sure the preview image comes up and the photo counter goes down, indicating that the image was saved to the SD card. Here is a small clip of our camera taking a photo and the preview on the camera showing the image taken. If you are having issues with Octolapse capturing images to the SD card, I found sometimes it was good to enter this command while connected to the Pi in order to manually change the capture target. Now we can start the print again. Only, we will not see the preview window change when Octolapse takes a snapshot. That is because the Pi will never receive the image that the camera took as it will be stored on the SD card. We can see Octolapse has indicated that it has taken two snapshots and the preview window has not changed. It seems to be working. Let's let this print finish and check it out once it's done. Here we are after the time lapse is finished. We see that the time lapse captured 247 images, but the preview window on Octolapse never changed. That is because all the images were sent to the SD card, so the Pi does not render them. If we navigate to the time lapse tab, we also see there are no new time lapses. I will be rendering the time lapse myself using Adobe Premiere Pro. Here's what it looks like. Here is a final side-by-side -side of all three methods described in this video. As you can see, the method of using the SD card seems to have given the highest resolution images, which is exactly what we wanted. This video showed you what it's like to set up Octolapse with a webcam and two different ways of using an external DSLR to use with your Palette 2. To see a playlist that contains some of the amazing features Palette 2 has, click here. Check out the rest of our channel for more informative videos like this one. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video or connect with us at support at mosaicmfg.com.